Okay? Superior Court makes a decision. We presume, unless there's some extraordinary reason otherwise, we presume it's a correct decision. If it's an inferior court, we don't make that presumption. We don't presume it's bad either. It just doesn't carry any automatic validity with it. Why? Because it didn't take all the factors into account. It only operated within its limited perception, its limited scope. Okay? <clears throat> Going on, it says, a superior court may be shown not to have had power to render a particular judgment by reference to its record. So you look at the record and you can see whether or not it had jurisdiction. Okay? If it had no jurisdiction, then its judgment is no good. But if it had jurisdiction, it has a good judgment. Okay? Note that in California, superior court is the name of a particular court. Okay? So when it's capitalized. When a court acts by virtue of a special statute conferring jurisdiction in a certain class of cases, what are we talking about? We're talking about criminal courts, civil courts, right? Those are classes of cases. Okay. <clears throat> when a court acts by virtue of a special statute conferring jurisdiction in a certain class of cases, it is a court of inferior or limited jurisdiction for the time being, no matter what its ordinary status may be. Okay? The decisions of a superior court can only be challenged in a court of appeal. Okay, that's, but the decisions of an inferior court are subject to collateral attack. In other words, in a superior court, one may sue an inferior court directly rather than resort to appeal to an appellate court. So you go through a case, they wouldn't let you put all the evidence in because it wasn't relevant, according to the judge. So after it's all over and the smoke blows away, you now file a suit and you name the court as a defendant. But you're not suing for money, you're suing for decision. Okay? The original defendants, they are the ones at risk. But, I mean, the original plaintiff who came against you, he's the one that's at risk for money. But you sue that court because your claim is, as the court was an inferior court, therefore couldn't make a good decision, didn't make a good decision. And we have to get all the facts in, all of the considerations, and that's why we're reopening the case in a real superior court. So we're not in a court of record. So You're in a court of record the second time. The second time. Yeah. Okay. Second time you open it up in a court of record. You, you open up. Remember, a court of record is a superior court. Also, a superior court is a court of record. Works both directions. Okay? You're proceeding according to the common law. The tribunal is independent of the magistrate. So any case you have, you can reopen. No statute of limitations. No statute of limitations, because there's no statutes in common law. Is this different than a counterclaim? This no, a counterclaim is when somebody makes a claim against you. Or a cross-complaint against you. Well, a cross-complaint, that doesn't count either. Okay. But a counterclaim is when somebody has a claim against you, and then you come back and make a claim against them. But in order to make your counterclaim really stick as a counterclaim, the first thing you have to do is challenge their jurisdiction. If they do not have jurisdiction, then all of the consequential injuries that you suffered now become collectible items. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, now, the decisions of a superior court may only be challenged in a court of appeal. But that little statement only applies to state courts. It does not apply to your court of record. Okay? Uh, let's see. Let's go. Can you repeat that sentence again? I, I didn't quite catch it. The last sentence. Well, now I'm in trouble. No, it applies to them, but it... It applies... The, the, the ability to appeal a decision 
only applies to state courts. It does not apply to your private court. Okay? Your, your court of record, where you're the sovereign of the court, well, it's king's bench, basically. In other words, you're the king, you're there. So there is no appeal from the king. All right? So there is appeal from a state court because the king's not there. The judge is sitting there. If they're operating according to the common law, I'm not sure how they ever worked that out. But I, I, I've never seen a court of record, frankly. They're all equity courts. In, in, in the English language, if the gender is unknown, then we use the masculine gender. That's okay. That's I'll a rule. So it's, it, they, when, when somebody uses a masculine gender, you do not know if the gender is, is male or female. See? A lot of people object to it because they don't understand the neutrality of that. So, anyhow, now you're going to love this next item. Okay. This last paragraph, I really ought to put this up front. Maybe I'll get around and revise this thing, the website. But it's the last paragraph. Now listen to this. The Supreme Court in Schneckloth versus Bustamante, 412 U.S. 218, on page 255 in 1973. Uh, they, that case in 1973 cited a very old case called Ex Party Watkins, Three Peters at uh, 202 and 203. And what they said was this, here it is. No statutory or constitutional court, whether it be an appellate or Supreme Court, can second guess the judgment of a court of record. Quote, the judgment of a court of record whose jurisdiction is final is as conclusive on all the world as the judgment of this court would be, this court being the Supreme Court. It is as conclusive on this court as it is on other courts. It puts an end to inquiry concerning the fact by deciding it. So when you have a court of record and you come to that final judgment, that's it, kiddo. Not appealable. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go at it again. Remember I said earlier that you can have a new trial on a case. But what's the probability of winning? <laughs> you know? However the jury decided last time, it's going to decide the same thing this time. You know, so, so be a different jury. Different jury. I mean, if you really had a jury that went awry, yeah, it might be worth a shot. But again, uh, third trial only happens two, three times in a century. You know, it doesn't happen often at all. And so the system works. You know, but it, it's it's a new jury considering new things. There have to be new things, that, pretty much, unless, like I said, you got a really sick jury, which is not likely. Anyway, the <coughs> The court of record, the decision of the court of record is not appealable. Any decision comes out of your court of record is not appealable. <clears throat> your court is king's bench. By the way, the word bench means court. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's king's bench. You, uh, whatever the king decides, you can't go above the sovereign. Okay? So, <clears throat> If some, whoever you're suing, if they don't ask for a jury of sovereigns, of peers, well then, ain't gonna make it. You, know? <laughs> you had a question. Yeah, Bill. Um, uh, California Constitution says that a court of record, um, or that says that uh, all three levels of courts, superior court, appellate court, and supreme court, are courts of record. Right. So, why did they do that if uh, a court of record is not appealable? Well, state courts, well, that, that is an anomaly, uh, but remember this, the superior court can be an inferior court. We need a microphone here. The superior court may be an inferior court, and its decisions are appealable to the appellate court, which is a court of record, which can take everything into account. 
On the other hand, if the appellate court acts like an inferior court, its decision can be appealed to the court of record called the superior court. 